When you are stuck on a plane, the last thing you want to encounter is an entitled parent. But that is exactly what happens to this woman. This EP will stop at nothing to get what she wants, and trouble ensues. This kid just wants to enjoy drawing. But of course, that is not okay with this entitled parent. What accusations does she make about the drawings? You'll only find out by watching this episode of Voicey Hears Entitled Parents. This story was called, You Weren't Eating It, So I Stole It and Gave It to My Kid. So this just happened a few hours ago on my flight home, and I figured I would post this while it was still fresh in my mind. So my flight had just taken off, and they were coming around with food. Seated next to me is Entitled Mum and her kid. They told the flight attendant that they didn't want to buy anything, and they just got water and refused the free snacks. The flight attendant double checks to make sure they didn't want anything, and again, they refuse. I had a bit of an upset stomach at the time, and I knew I wasn't going to eat anything right then, but I bought some Pringles and got the free cookie with my ginger ale to snack on later. It was a four hour flight. Less than 10 minutes later, the kid starts whining that he wants Pringles. The entitled mum eyes mine, but doesn't say anything. Noticing her look, I quickly stash mine into my bag, thinking she would be a decent human being and not go through my stuff before going to use the washroom. There's a bit of a line at the back of the plane, so I'm gone for 10 minutes at the most. I come back and my bag is open on my seat, food all pulled out, and the kid is there munching on my freaking food. The cookies are already done, and the kid is stuffing his face with my Pringles. Excuse me, miss, but did you go into my bag and take my food? You weren't eating it, and my child was hungry. I didn't even hesitate before hitting the attendant button. Miss, that was my food that I paid for. You had no right to take it. It's not like you were eating it, and you could use to lose some weight anyways. It's at this point in time that the same flight attendant that sold me the Pringles comes over and asks what the problem was. I had left to use the washroom and I came back to find this lady had gone through my bag to take the food I had purchased out and had given it to her child. No I didn't, I purchased those. Ma'am, you refused my offer for any food twice. Did you take her food? She wasn't eating it. At this point in time, I lean over to the kid. Hey little man, can you do me a favor? He nodded, still stuffing his face with my Pringles. Can you point to where your mum got the chips from? Immediately, he points to my bag. Ma'am, you're going to have to pay her back for her chips. No way, she wasn't eating them. Regardless if she was eating them or not, you stole what she purchased. Either you buy her a new pack, or we will have to get police to intervene once we land. EM loses her freaking mind at this, but the flight attendant stands her ground and makes her buy a new set of chips. She also moves me to an empty row in the back and sets me up with another packet of free cookies and another drink. The flight attendant then lets me know that she'll be informing the police of what happened, and she was very sorry that it happened. I don't know if she wound up getting arrested once she left the plane, but I sure as heck hope I never run into her again. You'd think she'd come up with a better reason than just, well you weren't eating them, so I have every right to take them. Does this entitled mom really purchase food and then eat it all straight away, or just throw it away? Has she never really saved food before? Never had leftovers? It's just such a strange justification for stealing someone's food. I love how innocently the kids just like points straight to the bag as well. There's no sense in which, oh my mum did something wrong and I need a cover for her. It shows that the kid was pretty innocent in this situation. He was just probably hungry, and he probably doesn't care where it came from. From his perspective, he just saw the flight attendants handing out free food to everybody. So what does it matter if it comes from a food tray or from a bag? I think, unfortunately, because the police officer's time is scarce, they're probably not going to care about some lady stealing snacks on a plane. I feel like a significant punishment could be the airline banning her from flying with them again. That way she doesn't get to fly with the airline of her choice, and if she continues that behaviour, she basically won't be able to fly anywhere, because they've all banned her. This story was called, EM is ticked off I didn't spend enough money on her son for Christmas. I have a cousin who has seven kids, and I had just moved and hadn't seen them since the youngest was in diapers. Now this cousin also has a sister, who has exactly one child. For that one kid, she gets food stamps, child support, and she doesn't freaking work. She is the type of person who trades their food stamps for cash, and blows her money on stupid crap, like trips to Cali and weed. She literally only cares about someone if she can use them. Mind you, my cousin with the seven 
works her butt off. She is a little embarrassed that she gets government help because she feels responsible for having all seven of her children. But no matter how hard she works, she makes enough for bills and the food stamp she gets buys just enough food to last the month. Growing kids eat a lot. Mind you, I was 20 turning 21 and I always had hella money left over after every check. My bills were paid on time and I would help my mother from time to time. We visited the kids one day and the third youngest told me that Christmas was coming but he knows he wasn't going to get anything from Santa but he is excited that they get to eat good food on Christmas. The kid lives off of ramen and ravioli. This shattered my heart. All of her kids are well behaved for the most part and they deserved a good Christmas. I started asking them what they wanted. In order from the oldest to youngest, Dax wanted headphones and a new sweater. Jen wanted a sweater and nail polish. Darren wanted a football and cake. JR wanted a soccer ball and cake. Z wanted Transformers and Power Rangers. Nana wanted My Little Pony. Jay wanted anything Paw Patrol. Names are changed, of course. So I talk to my cousin in Spanish, since the kids don't understand it yet. And I tell her how I will take Christmas off and how I want to take the kids for her. She looked like she wanted to cry. She thanked me and told me she would try to pay me back. I told her no. She stated she would pick up an extra shift because she still wanted to get them something. So I got paid and I gave myself a $40 limit per kid. I got each kid two big presents from Walmart and with the remaining money, got them all small stuff from the dollar store. Her kids appreciate everything you get them. The two that wanted cake, they got cake. I even put a bow on that thing and we hid it behind the milk and eggs in the fridge. Now, I guess my cousin told her sister because I got a call from her sister and this is how the conversation went. Hey, Chris told me you were doing Christmas for her kids? Yeah, they are spending Christmas Eve at my house. Mum's cooking dinner and we open presents the next morning. Surely you have room for one more. Are you talking about good kid? Of course I am. All right, no problem. Drop him off Christmas Eve night so he can eat and watch movies, then pick him up the next morning. No problem. Mind you guys, after buying the kids their presents and my parents theirs, I was a little broke. Entitled cousin called me the day before Christmas Eve. So I scrounged what I could and got good kids some dollar store toys. Christmas Eve comes and my mum picks up the seven and brings them to the house. They are flabbergasted by the presents under the tree and in the stockings with their names. The older ones goofing about who got what. I wait for an hour or two and Entitled Cousin never brings Good Kid. So we feed the kids and start watching movies. After about three movies, all of the kids pass out to food comas. The next morning we wake and there's no word from Entitled Cousin. The kids start diving into their presents. JR and Darren have some Christmas cake and they share with their siblings. Everything is in full swing. Then, banging on the door. I open it and I'm not really happy. Why the heck are you banging on my- Oh, it's you guys. Why didn't you bring Good Kid last night? What's your mouth? I got busy and we couldn't make it. Smelling bullcrap and rolling my eyes. You've said worse stuff in front of Good Kid. You want to come in? Sorry, we don't have time. Can we just get his presents, his meal, and go? His meal? Yeah, your mom cooked. Yeah, last night. You were busy and the kids ate it all. You didn't save Good Kid a plate? You never brought him, so no. Whatever, just give us his presents. Good Kid looks like he wants to stay and play. I felt bad for the kid. I walked in and swam through the wrapping paper till I got to Good Kid's presents. They were small, so I put them in a gift bag. He opened them on my porch and his eyes lit up. Whoa, a ninja and a wrestler. Oh, silly putty. I got a puzzle. I love this. Thank you so much, Momo. I got a little glomp. I hugged him back and said Merry Christmas. That's it? I gave her a look, trying to compose myself. What do you mean? How much did you spend on them? None of your business? You know, you were selfish. You bought him these cheap toys so you could buy Chris and all her kids that crap. Like good kid have one of each of their toys so it's fair. Are you insane? Closes doors and covers good kid's ears. It's Christmas. Be glad I bought anything at all. You only ever call us when you want something. You rob your son of a good time because you only care about yourself. It's not fair to him. You spend your money on bullcrap when you have a whole child to care for. You only have one child and because you milk your baby daddy that poor soul pays hella money for his son. But you spend that money on your nails and weed. How about you act your age and be responsible for once? Entitled cousin 
looked shocked. Who do you think you are? A woman who doesn't get assistance but pays taxes so lazy people like you can feed your kid. The woman that bought your kid Christmas presents because I wasn't selfish like his mother. EC looked like she wanted to hit me. She would have swung if my mum hadn't come outside. EC is intimidated by my mum. She takes good kid and leaves. She ended up moving to Chicago to mooch off her mother now. I hope good kid is okay and that he doesn't pick up her horrid habits. Isn't it crazy that the mother of seven kids, who you'd think would be seven times likely as being entitled, right? She actually recognized, well, I was the one who had this many kids. I feel responsible for that. I'm going to take responsibility for working hard for them and providing for them. And she even feels guilty over taking any governmental or food stamp support. So the mum of seven is working hard and probably paying taxes. So the mum of one doesn't have to work and can just live at the expense of other people. You can tell it's just in her nature because then when she demands generosity from the hero of our story, it's apparently not good enough. The toys are too cheap. You should have saved the meal even though I didn't drop the kid off for the dinner. And that's the problem with people like this. They always want more from other people without doing any of the work. It's no surprise that she then moved to mooch off her mother. This story was called Entitled Parent Demands I Stop Drawing in My Own Home. A little context. My mother ran a daycare for single parents out of our home. She ran it until I turned 18. She charged very little compared to other daycares because she wanted to help out people who were struggling. We had all kinds of people's kids in there, and most of them were great. Sometimes I was a little annoyed at constantly having a lot of random, new kids in the house, but I managed. My family's religious, as am I, and I have respect for all religions. But one of the parents whose two girls we took care of was frantically even more religious than us. She'd believe any conspiracy when it came to evil things. She wouldn't let her kids watch any films with talking animals because she said it was witchcraft, nor let them have dolls because they were idols. Though despite how careful she was keeping her kids away from evil spirits, she had a ridiculously poor judgment when it came to men and would marry them within months of meeting them. Then divorce when she realized she'd brought some creeper into the home and put her kids in danger. I'll refer to her as EM. Now, I really loved to draw, and I'd finally settled on a half anime-esque style that worked well for me. There isn't a day I don't draw. It's everything to me. I was carrying a simple drawing of Kenshin from Roroni Kenshin through the house on my way to my room as EM was coming to pick her kids up in the evening and she saw it. I showed her what I'd drawn when she asked to see, and she flipped. Now, it's been years, so this is a sum up of what's been said. Is that anime? Anime is evil. It has evil spirits attached to it. It's just my drawing style. It's fine, I drew Kenshin. He's a swordsman that protects people. He's a good guy. No, anime is evil. You can't draw that anymore. I don't want the evil spirits to come out and get attached to my kids. There aren't any evil spirits attached to this. I'm not even drawing evil things. No, you can't draw that around my kids anymore. I don't even show it to your kids. It's not evil. It's just an art style from Japan. No, it has evil spirits. You have to stop drawing it. After that, I quit trying to argue and stayed quiet. Walking away, she spent a good chunk of time trying to convince my mum that anime was evil and that my art had spirits attached to it and that she didn't want me to draw art like that anymore in my own house. It made my mum a little wary of anime, but otherwise she shrugged it off and asked me to make sure Entitled Mum didn't see any of my art lying around. I think this story helps clarify the distinction between a religious person who's non-superstitious and a religious person who's superstitious. I think the assumption is just because someone is religious that they are also a superstitious person, but that's usually not the case. Being religious usually means you believe in a set of values of how you should treat other people and how you should behave in your own personal life. Someone who's superstitious usually believes something bad will happen to you from some unrelated action that you take. Sort of the classics, walking under a ladder, encountering a black cat, breaking a mirror, and in this case, drawing anime figures. Most of these beliefs usually aren't scientifically causally proven, but rather emotional reasons. Something anecdotal. 
My cousin's best friend used to draw anime figures, and then on their flight to Japan, their plane crashed. The human mind is very good at creating patterns when there aren't any, and I believe this is probably why we have the superstitions that we do. Seeing a link between something that isn't really there. If you'd like your story to be narrated by me, don't forget to visit the subreddit r slash voicey here, link below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.